Ryan, what's on your radar? Well, last week I talked about a rapidly expanding project within Medicare that could lead to its full privatization if the Biden administration continues pursuing it like they have been. It's called direct contracting, and it's an experiment that's being tested out by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation. Here's what I can add to the story today. The former head of the center was Adam Bowler, who was, not coincidentally, a college roommate of Jared Kushner's and also, not coincidentally, had previously run a healthcare startup called Landmark Health, one of the new VC-backed healthcare companies sweeping the industry. It was Bowler who designed the experiment, and according to a document I obtained in January 2019, ahead of the launch of the new direct contracting model, the Office of the General Counsel for the Health and Human Services Department warned in writing that it appeared as if the new project was being set up to benefit specific companies. Quote, we are concerned based on CMS's regular references to organizations like ChenMed, Oak Street Health, and Verily in the comments and otherwise that this model has been designed with specific private sector entities in mind. If accurate, this could create ethics concerns as the creation of this model would give those entities a leg up in the market, unquote. Its, its launch was announced anyway in April 2019. Landmark Health was backed, by the way, by the VC firm Oxion. Multiple Oxion-funded health companies, such as Oak Street Health, were directly referenced in the documents setting up the new project, which is what drew the scrutiny of the OGC. Under Bowler, CMMI contracted with Oxion to recruit the non-career staff for CMMI, which then went on to design the program. Once the project was set up, Oxion-backed Landmark Health contracted with CMMI to become a direct contracting entity, meaning Bowler's model would be shoveling money to the firm he had left. Bowler is now CEO of Rubicon Founders, a venture capital and private equity firm operating in the healthcare industry. In May 2019, as the model was still being put together, a calendar alert went out to staff reading, quote, discussion with Landmark on the direct contracting model. Career staff were appalled. Quote, this stuff is so effing gross, wrote one in a group text with other aides, which was shared with me. Ugh, what the F, replied another, with a third sending a link to the, to the office of the inspector general suggesting it be reported. Bowler recently sat down with two other former heads of CMMI for a panel discussion on the healthcare industry. Each one said that he had recruited his successor and all now run healthcare companies. The first person you'll hear is Patrick Conway, the second is Adam Bowler, and the third, Brad Smith. And this is about as succinct a summary of how Washington really works, with both parties teaming up to build giant spigots that funnel money to the richest people in the country through their connections. CMMI has changed the health system in America, and you know everybody who's been associated with that should feel good about it. One other thing I'd add, just to, you know, at the administrator level too, is because, and this just for people at health and people watching, because I don't, I don't think reading the news, everybody would always know this, but, you know, I think all of us on this are friends with Andy um, uh, and Andy, somebody we work with and, and listen to, and we, we work wonderfully, all three of us with SEMA. Uh, and uh, Seema and Andy have a good relationship uh, because, uh, you know, I think so frequently this is painted as, you know, such aggressive uh, disputes, et cetera. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I have learned, unfortunately, don't listen to everything you read on this stuff um, because we work significantly together uh, and we're people that are trying to do the right thing and working hard at it. And that is 99% of people in government. I, I can't speak for everybody, but. I will tell you that that's what you see, and it doesn't matter administration wise. Okay, the SEMA he's referring to here is SEMA Verma, Trump's head of CMS, accused of a wild amount of corruption, both in the administration and back in Indiana, where she worked under Mike Pence. And the Andy he mentions is Andy Slavitt, Obama's head of CMS and an outspoken resistance Democrat who has now linked up with Oxion, the same VC firm that was funding Bowler, for his own Medicare privatization scheme. As Bowler said, in this industry, party doesn't matter. Anyway, here's Brad Smith. I agree with all of that. And I think that you've seen, you know, in direct contracting that Adam did, we have a ton of new companies or early stage, mid-stage companies in that. You know, when you look at our bundles program, it's almost entirely kind of new companies that have come into that space that are running that program. And so I think we've seen a lot of innovation there. I think it's important to continue to have that and to get 
the folks who already have a lot of volume also to participate in change. And so it's a, it's a delicate balance, but I think we've definitely, thanks to Patrick and Adam's efforts, you know, a lot of new folks come into the programs as well. And by new and mid-sized firms, he means venture capital and private equity. And when he says he wants the bigger volume players to come in, he's talking about insurance companies. And that's the end game here. The exit strategy for these PE and VC firms is to sell their companies to insurance companies who will then have successfully privatized Medicare. That's the path Diane Archer sees this going down if Biden continues to allow it. Archer, who's president of Just Care and, health, and a health policy expert, told me this, quote, the way they make money is by spending as little as possible on patient care while ensuring as best they can that they have all diagnoses possible for their enrollees in order to maximize government payments. The more diagnoses, the higher the government payments. Government payments are set up front and unrelated to the cost or number of services people receive. And yes, the incentive is to deny as much care as possible. It's also to delay as much care as possible and to create administrative and financial barriers that make it hard for enrollees to get care, even if the DCE, the direct contracting entity, does not delay or deny care. The private equity takeover is short term, she said. Private equity will sell their DCEs to insurers, will get fully privatized Medicare, unaccountable and far less cost effective, traditional Medicare will wither on the vine. And it's not just that it'll wither, but it'll make reform that much harder. Aside from the looting of the public funds and the worsened care, the shift toward privatization has profound implications for the political economy of healthcare politics. Every new private equity or venture capital backed firm that grabs a bigger piece of the healthcare market becomes a new, well funded obstacle to public minded reform efforts. You're creating and fueling the monsters that then turn around and destroy your lab. There are important details on how all of this works that you can find in my story over at The Intercept that published this morning, which I reported with my colleague Austin Allman. But the basic point is this. The public is getting close to losing control of its biggest public health program, turning it over to companies whose number one concern is their next earnings call. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So to you, I, I, could, I could see from a libertarian, like, all right, this is good, or this is why this stuff shouldn't be done in the first place. I'm curious for your, it's, your take on I it. I mean, it's complicated. Look. The the act of contracting out mm -hmm. government services can have uh, 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 positives, in my view, because it, it can be often more cost efficient than the, right. the government because there are the government inter incentives are not it's good hard to, it's are hard not to never cost do that. saving right. right. Right, you and you, you, right, you have to do it for a you know, contract. Like the, the, the government doesn't doesn't build stuff, right? It hires builders to build stuff. Right. It it and it wants to hire the most effect, cost effective builders to do it. So you have to do some of that. A lot of it is better, but it does when when the government you know has this giant pile of money that it, it gets to discharge through confusing back channels. Mm -hmm. Um, the well connect people who former government officials move into the private sector there they know how to turn I think turn on the spigot the right. analogy you use to direct those funds toward themselves to their friends and allies in a very backhanded and corrupt way so it's yeah it's it's uh, I mean it's a huge problem I mean the medical care is so confusing and so complex I complain all the time on the show about how the cost is hidden people don't know what they pay for and it makes the whole situation much worse this is kind of a symptom of that so yeah I don't know this sounds bad to me I'd have to you know look at it right. more closely but I, I I don't I don't want the thing I don't want is is government official the revolving door and just using that to you know to to arrange these kind of golden parachutes right. for themselves to set up their 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 landing after they're done with their public service right because then they have something exactly. to fall back on because they've set and, it up. because so much of it depends on how you design the equations mm -hmm. and if it's it's a, it's sort of like a cat and mouse game where the government is constantly trying to adjust for the McKinsey-like schemes that the private sector is coming up with, because they, they'll, they'll get the government formula and they'll figure out, oh, if we code this, this, and this, we get an extra $3 billion. So it's like this cat and mouse game, except the mice keep hiring the cats yeah. to, come, <laughs> to come work <laughs> with them and fattening them up and giving them cat treats. And the cat and mouse game doesn't work in that, in that way. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough problem. But, but right, you, you, but you, you, you want to have 
some kind of private. Right. There, there are areas of it that have that could benefit from being privatized, but it's it's nobody in it necessarily has the incentive to do what's best for the public or what, or right. or what's best for just being a good steward of the of the money pile. Right. Right. It's no. I want to take some of the money pile. Right. And everybody's doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Anyway. Well, Team Rising joins us next.